Hey, Instagram and Facebook and eventually YouTube, which you mamas, this is Abani from Exotic Earth Arts and I am joining you this week. We're going to be doing goddess magic and we're going to be talking about the goddess Demeter. I am just going to finish getting myself set up real quick because there are certain things I can't do until this thing is running. Um, if you're here watching on the replay, please throw a hashtag replay into the comments, wherever the comments happen to be where you're watching this. Um, and that helps other people find us in the future as well. Here we go. I'm going to open this. Oh, open. Fine. Let's have it. Beautiful. All right. So in the pre-show today, I thought that I would read. Um, so like I said, we're going to be talking about Demeter today. Um, and Demeter, um, I chose, I wanted to do her this week because she is a great goddess to focus on this time of year with Maven coming and being the heart of the season. Um, and one of the things that I thought I would do first um, in our pre-show is I would do a little reading here. This is from Women Who Run With Wolves by Clarissa Pinkola Estes. Um, it says here, myths and stories of the wild woman archetype. Um, I was posting in my Facebook group recently about Persephone Demeter. And someone was like, whoa, have you read this story in this book about um, the Persephone specifically? Hey, Nature Witch Ash, we're going to be talking about... Um, the goddess Demeter today, and I was actually just in our pre-show while I wait for folks to show up, um, asking people if you could throw a hashtag live into the comments, and I'm going to be doing a little bit of reading here from Women Who, women who Run With Wolves, which is actually about Demeter, while we wait for people to show up. So I'm going to go right into that now. Um, so it says, this story is called Baobo the Belly Goddess. I know it sounds weird. It actually does have Demeter in it. It doesn't sound like it off the get, but um, it says, the Earth Mother, De Mother Demeter had a beautiful daughter called Persephone, who was playing out in a meadow one day. Persephone came upon one particularly lovely bloom and reached out her fingertips to cup its lovely face. Suddenly the ground began to shake and a giant zigzag ripped across the land. Up from the deep, up from the deep, I lost where I was, within the earth charged Hades, the god of the underworld. He stood tall and mighty in a black chariot driven by four horses at the color of the ghost. Hades seized Persephone into his chariot, her veils and sandals flying. Down, down, down into the earth he reined his horses. Persephone's screams grew more and more faint as the rift in the earth healed over as though nothing had ever happened. The voice of the maiden crying out echoed through the stones of the mountains bubbled up into a watery cry from underneath the sea. Demeter heard the stones cry out. She heard the watery crying. And then over all the land came an eerie silence and the smell of crushed flowers. Hey, everybody on Facebook, if you're joining me, throw a hashtag live into the comments. I'm just doing a reading um, of Babo the Belly Goddess before we jump into talking about Demeter today. Um, so, and tearing her wreath from her immortal hair and unfurling down from each shoulder her dark veils, Demeter flew out over the land like a great bird searching for and calling for her daughter. That night, an old crone at the edge of a cave remarked to her sisters that she had heard three cries that day. One, a youthful voice crying out in terror, and another calling plaintively, and a third, that of a mother, weeping. Persephone was nowhere to be found, and so began Demeter's crazed and months-long search for her beloved child. Demeter raged. She wept. She screamed. She asked after, searched every land formation underneath, inside, and atop, begged mercy, begged death, but no matter what, she could not find her heart child. So she, who had made everything grow in perpetuity, cursed all of the fertile lands of the world, screaming in her grief, die, 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 because of Demeter's curse, no child could be born, no wheat could rise for bread, no flowers for feasts, no boughs for the dead. Everything lay withered and sucked at parched earth or dry beasts. Demeter herself no longer bathed. Her robes were mud-drenched, her hair hung in dreadlocks. Even though the pain in her heart was staggering, she would not surrender. After many askings, pleadings, and episodes, all leading to nothing, she finally slumped down at the side of a well in a village where she was unknown. And as she leaned her aching body against the cool stone of the well, along came a woman, or rather a sort of woman, 
And this woman danced up to Demeter, wiggling her hips in a way suggesting sexual intercourse and shaking her breasts in a little dance. And when Demeter saw her, she could not help but smile a little bit. The dancing female was very magical indeed, for she had no head whatsoever, and her nipples were her eyes, and a vulva was her mouth. It was through this lovely mouth that she began to regale Demeter with some nice, juicy jokes. Demeter began to smile and then chuckled, and then gave a full belly laugh, and together the two women laughed for the little belly goddess Baobao and the powerful earth mother goddess Demeter. And it was just this laughing that drew Demeter out of her depression and gave her the energy to continue her search for her daughter, which, with the help of Baobo and the crone Hecate and the son Helios, was ultimately successful. Persephone was restored to her mother. The world, the land, and the bellies of women thrived again. All right, and that's the story of Baobo. Um, and it, this book goes into more detail afterwards, talking about how Baobo, the belly goddess, is sort of... Um, a personification of the idea of women's talk and chatter and in our kind of current society and current culture that's sort of been reduced to just idle gossip and is talked down about very much so but is talking about how there's actually great value in the words that are exchanged between women in these sort of intimate spaces and how important they actually are but um, so that is from women who run with wolves so that said Again, if you're joining us, please feel free to throw a hashtag live or hashtag replay to the comments if you're watching after the fact. Helps folks find us. And um, now that I've finished the story and I've said that, we're going to leap into uh, what I want to talk about today, which is about Demeter, which we just read about. Um, so obviously the first thing I want to talk about when we talk about any goddess is talking about how she's depicted in myth. Uh, because as much as modern practice is important, and curtain and you know personal gnosis and the things that we discover about goddesses as we work with them are extremely valuable. I think that there is um, a lot of value. Uh, I won't say more value, but certainly equal value that should be placed on the myth and the stories that we hear about those goddesses in, within, because it gives us a lot of clues about the goddess and what we can expect in working with them, what sorts of animals they like and plants they like, and what sorts of things we can go to them for um, in our personal workings. Um, and Demeter, along with Persephone and Hecate, are especially Persephone, Persephone, are a big part of something that was a big part of Greek culture and ancient Greek um, folk belief, which was called the Eleusian Mysteries. I hope I'm pronouncing that correct because I've only ever actually read that word. Um, and the Eleusian Mysteries was actually a biannual festival. That means it took place twice in a year, if you don't know what that means for some reason. Um, there was the Rites of Springs, or Lesser Mysteries, in the springtime, and then the Greater Mysteries, which would take place in the fall, right around this time of year, actually. Um, and in, the, in, in these rituals that they did as part of the Eleusinian, let me see the word again, Eleusinian Mysteries, maybe that's the right way to say it, Eleusinian Mysteries, um, was that they would do a reenactment or a retelling of the myth of Demeter and Persephone, which was part of the story I just read. That's just a small part of it. Um, they would reenact the myth or retell it as a way to sort of experience what death was like. Um, and it was said to be a very life altering experience. Um, and that it would help those who went through it to appreciate the transformative power of death and rebirth. And that when people came out the other side of this ritual, they no longer feared death. Um, all the sources I came across said that pretty much anybody who was anybody in ancient Greece was a member of or participant in these. Um, Eleusinian mysteries. Um, and oftentimes, w another part that was, it wasn't just an enactment, there was a whole ritual that would lead up to this process whereby people would actually fast ahead of time. Um, and fasting is a big part of a lot of magical, spiritual, occult practices where the general belief is that um, de deprivation of that sort actually helps to heighten um, psychic awareness and spiritual awareness and our ability to perceive things extrasensorily. Um, so they would fast ahead of time and they would drink a special drink that was made out of barley, mint, and potentially a type of uh, fungus that I believe is called ergo. Um, that's not proven. People just sort of tend to theorize that. Hey, Brooke, 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 Brooke Babbling, we're talking about the goddess Demeter today and we're right now chatting about the Eleusinian um, mysteries. Um, so it was believed that um, these ingredients all together would help, again, um, were somewhat, at least mildly hallucinogenic altogether, so that the person would experience things on a much more deep level. 
Um, also, and in that myth too, um, and I, I include this because I think it's an important um, factor in understanding um, the goddess demeanor and the things that we can go to her for. Um, in the midst of that myth about Demeter's search for Persephone when Persephone is stolen from Hades, um, at some point Demeter goes to this king, the king of Attica, if I remember correctly, and he asks and disguises herself as, I believe, like an old crone. Almost thinks sort of like uh, Beauty and the Beast when the old woman goes up to the castle and asks for help. Um, that might have even been inspired by this myth, for all we know. Um, I didn't research that, but that'd be kind of a cool thing to discover. So she went to the king and asked for his assistance, and he gave it. And the king had a few, um, several, a few different children um, and sons, most importantly. Um, and in the midst of staying with her, she decided that in order to thank the king for his generosity, that she would try to make one of his sons immortal. Um, and so what she did was she tried to put the son into the fire so that his mortal self would burn away, but she was caught in the midst of doing this. So she had to abort mission, basically. And after that, she was like, okay, well, I guess I can't do that because that didn't go over too well with the mortals. So instead, what she did was that, hey, Water Champ 413, we were talking about the goddess Demeter today. Um, I was just talking about some of the places that she shows up in myth. Um, so in order to thank King Atticus, or the King of Attica, for assisting her while she was on her search for Demeter, she, instead of making the one son immortal, chose to make to give another one of his sons the gift of knowledge as far as how to cultivate and um, care for and deal with the agriculture general of grains and the harvest. So in this, in the myth, Demeter is responsible for giving the information of agriculture to humanity in general. So that's why she's the goddess of the harvest. Um, you know, so for those of us who are trying to work with Demeter in the present day, uh, modern, there are a few different things that you can go to her for. I only wrote two down, but there's three I meant to include, so obviously I'm gonna tell you about three. Um, obviously the symbolic harvest, so pretty much anything in spirituality and the occult that we deal with is, of course, you can look at it literally, but a lot of it's also symbolic. And the harvest, of course, is no different, so obviously the symbolic harvest is um, all about the cycle of life and how things that die are reborn again. You know, we think about the cycle of wheat, which we talk about a little bit more at Lamas. Um, the idea of, you know, the, the grain is cut and then the grain then helps more grain to grow the following year, and it's an ongoing cycle. So, you know, and there's this rhyme that we often hear on that time, time of year that says, hoof and horn, hoof and horn, all that dies must be reborn, often in a relationship to the cycle of agriculture. Um, so, as you know, when we think about it in that framework, that means that we can call upon Demeter during transformative work um, and drawing, when we're drawing on our past experiences in order to help get us through the new things and the current things that we're dealing with. Again, if you're joining me and you haven't done it yet, please feel free to throw hashtag live into the comments or hashtag replay if you're watching on the replay. It helps other folks find us, especially if you're on Facebook, because on Facebook it doesn't show me when you show up and I can't see you and I don't know who's watching and I would love to say hi. Um, so, yes, yeah, so using Demeter during um, even shadow work and transformation. Um, obviously, all of the goddesses in this myth, Persephone and Hecate, as well as Demeter, can all be used similarly. Um, but Demeter is helpful when we're talking about the harvest, especially when it comes to the manifestation and the coming out the other side of things. Um, and so, of course, we can also talk about the literal harvest. So for those of us that work with herbs that have little vegetable gardens or window gardens um, and like to work with plant magic and plant medicine, we can obviously appeal to Demeter in the literal sense for the literal harvest. Um, so, um, like I said, oh, thank you very much for that live, Brooke. Um, so we talk about the literal harvest. The harvest is a cycle, like I said before. So one of the most common ways that I've seen across all mythologies and a lot of different systems, um, in order to ask for a successful harvest, often you have to give part of the harvest. So every year the idea is when you, you cut down some of it, but you leave some of it in the field. And the idea is that that will then field, uh, excuse me, field, feed the the harvest of the future year which happens both energetically obviously but also in a very literal sense and as those things decompose they feed the soil um, so obviously giving offerings of cornmeal or barley or bread or honey or myrrh or even acorns which are things that 
are pretty plentiful this time of year in general because it's the harvest season are great ways to work with Demeter in that way as far as trying to bring up bring upon yourself and your practice a plentiful harvest season. The other thing, which is the thing I forgot to write down, which is like a duh, I can't believe I forgot that thing. Um, if you are a mom, a witchy mama, which is, you know, what I'm all about here. If you're a witchy mama and you've got kids and you want to protect them or you're, or especially if you've got older kiddos or even adult children that are traveling and you want to make sure that they're safe, Demeter is a great person to call upon. Hey, Annie, we're talking about the goddess Demeter today. Throw a hashtag live for me. I know you'll, you're good for that. I'm uh, talking about how Demeter is really a really great mama goddess when you're looking for a goddess to call on to help protect your children as they go about their daily lives, either when they're traveling or even if you, let's say you're divorced and you have an ex and your ex has the kid to keep them safe when they're not, you know, sort of within your ability to keep a direct eye on them. Demeter is a great protectress of children in that way. Um, and if you decide that you really love Demeter and you want to work with her on a personal level and you want to create an altar for her, there are some things that are very specifically um, for her that she really likes. Um, obviously, I know I just mentioned a few moments ago, things like bread, grain, uh, barley, rice, um, acorns, daisies, sunflowers, which again, I know some of these things are a lot also associated with llamas, but because of the Eleusinian mysteries we we're talking about earlier, and if you missed that, by all means, feel free to start this over at the end and catch it on the replay, because I read a story at the beginning, which is part of the um, mysteries, um, of the Eleusinian mysteries, which is really nice. Um, uh, kind of gives you a little bit more clues and more information that you might have missed. Um, also cinnamon, um, and if you're trying to figure out what type of an altar cloth to use or candles that she might like as far as the colors concerned, colors like green, dark brown, and gold are associated with Demeter. And as far as gemstones go, um, gold, amber, pearl, ivory, I believe silver, and obviously um, um, gold as like the, the metal also is a really great thing too. So. That is what I have to say about Demeter today. If you have any questions you've been watching, please feel free to throw them in the comments below. Um, I am planning to do Persephone in two weeks, not next week, but the week after, so we'll talk more about her. Um, and I also want to show you while we're I'm waiting for your questions, um, kind of show you some of my Maybun um, special things that I have in my shop right now in case people are interested. Because um, I know it's totally different seeing things um, live on a video like this as opposed to looking at a picture on a website. Sometimes seeing a video can be a really nice way to see things even better. Ooh. All right, so this is exciting. I brought this with me. I ordered these. Um, I have not even opened one of these myself yet, so you guys get to be some of the first people to see this. Hopefully I can back my chair up here so I can stand up because it's pretty big. Um, again, if you're just joining me on Facebook, please give me a hashtag live so I can say hi because Facebook won't show me your name and I want to say hello to you very much. So if you have questions about the goddess Demeter or even any questions about the Eleusinian Mysteries, love to hear it. All right, so this scarf has my Queen of Persephone design on it. It is part of my Maven collection um, and is um, intended to be a significant part of my Maven ritual. All right, let's see. Oh, it's upside down. Beautiful. Look at this, you guys. Oh, I designed this myself. So you can see, let me stand behind it because it is slightly translucent. So you can see here we have the skeleton eyes, or the skeleton hand with the eyeball here, and the skull in the middle, with the moons, and the skeleton hand on this side, obviously. And then there's the jawbones at the bottom. And what I was really trying to convey with this was the idea of being held by death. So the idea being that when you wrap it around your shoulders, the hands are actually holding your back, which I love. Look at how perfect that came out. Oh, like I said, this is the first time I've seen it and I love it. It's beautiful. Um, and the idea of the eyes of always having your back and being protected. Thank you. Thank you so much, Andrea, for, or Annie, excuse me, for the compliment. I am in love with this. Um, so much in love with this see the triple moon on the bottom. So the idea of being embraced by death as being a positive thing and a place for safety and rest and relaxation. So woo, look how beautiful that came out. I love it. 
All right, and you can find that in my shop, and if you haven't already signed up for my email list, you can get 20% off. That's the link in my bio and on Instagram, and it's the pinned post at the top of my Facebook page, too. All right, and then I have two other things, actually three other things, but one of them I forgot to, actually, ooh, I forgot four things. Um, I have a couple of things, uh, one thing that I forgot to bring with me, so I'm going to have to find a creative way to pull up the picture on my website and show you what the screen looks like because I'm on vacation. I'm in Maine. That's what the background is here. Um, and I totally flaked on bringing it with me, but it's one of my art pieces, like an actual like print. All right. So, but going on to the Persephone, another part of my, this is part of my ritual, um, bundle that's available in my shop right now from Maven. And it's this, um, Queen Persephone, ooh, Queen Persephone crown. And I know I've shared a few pictures of this on my Instagram, but here we go. So the idea is it's a crowning of Persephone ritual. And the idea being that you crown yourself as the underworld queen as a way to give yourself permission to begin the process of withdrawing. You know, as we often do this time of year, you know, we're just about to cross into the dark part of the year between Samhain and Yule when everything kind of just really slows down energetically. Um, sorry, I thought I heard car door. Um, and so this crown is sort of a way of letting your, reminding yourself that queens descend into the underworld and relax and recuperate too. I know, I love it too, Brooke. If, like I said, you can buy them in my shop. Feel free to check it out, 20% off when you click the link in my bio. So there is my Persephone crown. There are actually only three of these made right now. So if you really want one, make sure you grab it while you can. Um, and then I also have, these are probably gonna carry over into my Salon collection because they're actually more associated with Hecate. These are hag torches. So what these actually are, if you're not familiar, very beautiful crown. I'm bad at the whole rest thing. We all are bad at the rest thing. I'm also terrible at the rest thing. As you can see, I'm on vacation and I'm doing a live stream. So it is what it is. But that's part of what the ritual is all about, is being able to kind of give yourself that permission. You know, because ritual, while there is absolutely like a religious spiritual aspect to ritual, if you ask, in my opinion, ritual is so much more about the psychological cues that take place. So if you go into a ritual and you intentionally and specifically say to yourself, you know, I am giving myself permission to rest. I am giving myself permission to not work so hard right now because that's what mother nature is doing and that's what's natural for me to do right now. And I think that that can help, help us sink into the comfort of nothing which is really hard even for me to do. I'm a Gemini, I'm busy all the time, like constantly moving, it's a little ridiculous. So anyway, we're talking about the Hag Torch or Hecate Torch, what this is is actually a um, length of a mullen stalk, which has been dipped repeatedly into beeswax and rolled in some herbs, which are also associated with Hecate. Um, it says here, juniper berries and tips, myrrh, lavender, mugwort, poppy seeds, and love. Of course, um, I know I didn't make this myself. I just already couldn't remember <laughs> what I put in it, but it says it right on here. And there are directions right on this hand, nice little tag about what's in it and how to use it. Um, these guys get about um, 30 to 45 minutes of burn time, approximately. Um, so there is that. So these are, these are the hack torches. I love these. These were such a fun project to make, and there's a bunch of them in my shop. So those are also available. Um, and then one more physical thing that I have on hand that I'll show you um, because, uh, and then I'll show you the thing that I have to pull up on my other screen. Um, I don't know how well you guys can see this on the screen, but this is my Queen Persephone um, Ritual Anointing Oil. I'm just, I have Facebook down here, so I'm trying to make sure that the camera down here can see it too. Queen Persephone Oil. And you can see that this has, this one is real pretty. It's got lots of nice things in it. This is um, extra virgin olive oil, pomegranate seed oil, pomegranate for Persephone, of course, which I said we'll talk about in two weeks if you're not already familiar with the myth. Hey, Rachel, I'm just showing off some of my collection. And while you're here, real quick, I'm going to show Rachel my that scarf because I'm so in love with it and I just cannot wait. Look at this beautiful scarf, Rachel. Ugh. It's, so you can see those skeleton hands on here. The idea is that you wear it across your back and the hand of death is holding you in comfort. Ooh, love it. All right. Anyway, everybody else already saw it, so I don't want to spend too much time on that. Um, so, 
Oh, love the crown. Oof, me too. I love all of these things. I'm super excited about it. I can't wait to share it with you. Um, this has essential oils in it too, going back to the oil. Um, it's intended to be a very kind of fruity, florally, you know, so just really quick about to meet our Persephone. I don't want to spend too much time on it because I'm going to really give her her due in a couple of weeks. But Persephone is both a flower maiden and also the queen of the underworld. So I really wanted to kind of tap into that with this. So you've got a lot of like florally, fruity notes up high um, that are supposed to kind of tap into the whole flower maiden thing. But then there's also some kind of um, musky, um, deeper tones in there uh, with some cypress and some thyme of all things um, that kind of, kind of in the very background kind of gave you that like, oh yeah, um, she's the queen of flowers, but she's also the queen of death, which is so badass and as a Gemini I so appreciate and associate with that yeah good stuff so nice and you can see it's got all the spray it's also got um, rose quartz chips and onyx chips in here and there's another stone I think peridot is the other stone I put in here which was in purely intuitive based on what I had and some rose hips also this little sticker is really small so I couldn't write every single thing that's in it so that's why I'm telling you guys here rose hips and um, oh, rose petals, of course. So, so that is Queen Persephone oil. Also, of course, available in my shop. Um, the oil and the flower crown are what officially comes with the ritual bundle, if you're interested in that. Um, and then, of course, the scarf, too, which is wonderful. So now, really quickly, I'm going to pull up my website on this other tablet and show you my one very specific Demir thing, which is why I'm so irritated that I forgot it. Like, duh. Uh, which is a Demeter print, which I officially made for Lamas, but is kind of carried over into Maven because, again, there's so much crossover in the myth, in the mythology around this time of year. Fine art. I know if I were smart, I would have pulled this up ahead of time, so I appreciate you guys being, like, just a wee bit patient with me. Probably would have been smarter to open this up under my Maven collection instead of under art. Here we go. Do do do. Ugh, it doesn't want to load. All right, how about? Oh, it is loading very slowly. Oh, and if you really like that um, Queen Persephone design that's on the scarf, you can also get that on T-shirts on my website too. Oh, hey Brianna, we are talking about the guys per uh, Demeter today. I was just showing you guys. Here we go. Some of my Maybun Demeter-related stuff. Here, I'm just waiting for this picture to load for you guys. So this is my husband's tablet. Come on, you can do it. Um, so on t-shirts, there's both um, slim fit women's t-shirts. There's also unisex t-shirts, depending on what um, you prefer. I, I like the slim fit ones, which is why I got them that way, because I like having the extra length in them. Probably because I'm a mom and I've got just that little bit of a push in my belly. Um, and you can also find there's some other designs. Oh, here we go. So here is my Demeter print there we go there is Demeter ah oh, lovely and you can find her in my shop too it's only five dollars for that print um, if you order off this live that ritual bundle I'll probably throw it in for free because I like giving people stuff so that said Next week, I will act, well, actually say in probably next week, I'll wear one of my t-shirts. So if you join me, you'll get to see that. Um, hey, Ariel. Um, you missed some other stuff. I showed off some other things. I'll show this to Ariel, too, because like I said, I'm super stoked. I actually had not opened this before the live, you guys. So I was so excited about it. I'm still so excited about it. So this is one of the pieces in my Maven collection is one of these scarves. So you can see the skeleton hands on either side. The idea is I wanted people to be able to wear it across their back. So that the, uh, the hands of death were around your shoulders, holding you. Oh, perfect. All right. Anyway, that's all I have for this week. If you're joining late, um, please feel free to throw a hashtag live in there. And of course, if you go back and rewatch a hashtag replay too, it will help more folks find this, more folks 
um, to watch this also. So that said, next week when I come back, I'm going to be doing my Sabbath series. We're going to be talking about how to celebrate Maven. going to give you some social distancing friendly um, suggestions. And of course, I'll talk more about my ritual bundle because I'm home. Um, I didn't bring it with me because um, my ritual that I printed out that I wrote for the ritual bundle is already in my book shadows. But my book of shadows is big and heavy and I didn't want to drive it and carry it all the way to Maine with me. So I'll show it off next week. I'll show off the t-shirts. I'll... Um, show off some other things um and my persephone print i might save that until the following week or maybe i'll do it both who knows so join me next week when we talk about how to celebrate maven and i hope you guys have a wonderful holiday weekend enjoy your extra day off um enjoy the shift of the season because i know i could feel it on the air emily rose live some lives i'm so glad you're here but i'm actually signing off feel free to go back and watch this on the replay it's going to be in my instagram feed momentarily to hear about the goddess demeter um so Love you all. Have a great weekend and take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.